Welcome to this week's episode of Morning Report Emergency Medicine. I'm Alec Weir, and this is the case of Keep Calm and Don't Get Trolled. I want to thank one of our second years, Dr. Nena Ajesame, for passing this case along. A 45-year-old female with no past medical history presents with dyspnea and cough since yesterday. She moved to the United States from the Congo one year ago, and she also endorses fatigue for about two weeks. Her vitals of 39.0, heart rate of 103, blood pressure of 161 over 79, respiratory rate of 33, setting 98% on room air. I said she moved from the Congo a year ago. Are we doing a tropical disease episode? Are we going to have to think about malaria? Are we ordering blood smears out of the emergency department? Well, let's, let's take a step back. Let's talk about a resuscitation and evaluation. IV fluids for this patient, right? She's a little tachycardic. Antipyretic, she's febrile, which, which may be helping drive that heart rate. A chest x-ray and EKG. Now, what labs do you want? Do you want CBC, CMP, or BMP? lactate, dimers, cardiac enzymes, she's dyspneic, short of breath. She's breathing 33 times a minute, UA, UPREG. Do you want to do antibiotics? She is febrile and tachycardic. Here's her EKG to sinus tachycardia, right around 110 beats per minute. But here's her x-ray. Do you look at the opacification in the right lung as well as in the left? The official read, patchy opacities in the right lung may represent developing pneumonia in the proper clinical setting. Trace right pleural effusion. Really? Pneumonia? Don't talk about pneumonia. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs? You... Uh, did I, am I wasting your time with a pneumonia case? Remember, don't get trolled. Patient's TSH was less than 0.01 with a free T4 of 4.1 nanograms per deciliter. Normal for us is 0.8 to 1.8. And a free T4 of 12.8 picograms per milliliter. Normal, 2 to 4.4. This is thyrotoxicosis. Now, what is thyrotoxicosis? It's a hyperthyroid state. Now, thyroid storm is the far end of the spectrum. That is the worst of the worst. Thyrotoxicosis and hyperthyroid are used sort of interchangeably, but thyrotoxicosis is it's a hypermetabolic condition with a ton of different causes. Things like hormone overproduction, like Graves' disease or toxic multinodular goiter. You can have increased release of the hormone, like thyroiditis or trauma, or you can have exogenous hormone use. People, someone taking extra thyroid or taking diet medications that have thyroid hormone in that. The clinical features of thyrotoxicosis are tachycardia and classically atrial fibrillation. Altered mental status, pyrexia often greater than 40 degrees Celsius. Our patients was 39. You can have a goiter. Your ocular exam, you can have lid lag or proptosis and then a fine tremor. There's always things that can precipitate thyrotoxicosis in patients who are already at risk. Medical causes like infection, cerebrovascular accidents, MIs, CHF, PE, or emotional stress, surgical precipitants like thyroid surgery or even non-thyroid surgery, trauma, burns, any stress on the body, endocrine causes like hypoglycemia, DKA or hyperosmolar non-ketotic comas, and then drugs, amiodarone, lithium, and even contrast iodine from our CT scans can put people into thyrotoxicosis. And now you're asking yourself, you're saying, there has to be some way for me to know if this is thyroid storm or if this is thyrotoxicosis. Isn't there some very difficult to remember name and hard to remember scoring system that can help you out? Well, of course there is. There's the Birch-Wartowski score, with a score of 45 being highly suggestive of thyroid storm. And you can see here all the criteria, temperature, CNS effect, GI hepatic dysfunction, tachycardia, congestive heart failure, atrial fibrillation, and then precipitant history. And the treatment for thyrotoxicosis first is a beta blockade, either propranolol or esmolol. And then you have to inhibit the synthesis of the hormone with propylthiouracil or methimazole. You want to inhibit the release of hormone with iodine, either PO or IV, and then also inhibit the conversion to active hormone. And that's done with steroids. Give supportive care with benzos and IV fluids, and then of course treat the precipitant. And for this patient's hospital stay, she had acute pulmonary edema in the setting of thyrotoxicosis. Her inpatient echo was actually normal with preserved ejection fraction. She was started on propranolol and methimazole and is still awaiting her endocrine follow-up to delineate the origin of her hyperthyroidism. So what are our take-home points? Know your thyroid conditions. Know your thyroid storm, your thyrotoxicosis. Know your clinical features like tachycardia, especially atrial fibrillation, altered mental status, pyrexia. Know the precipitants, the medical, surgical, endocrine, and the drugs, especially that iodinated contrast from your CT scan that can precipitate this disease. Have that birch wartowski score in the back of your head. Just know there is a score for thyroid storm be able to Google it, look it up on your smartphone, and then how to treat it. 
the beta blockade, inhibiting the synthesis, release, and conversion of the hormones, and then supportive care. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Weir underscore Alec, or subscribe to this channel for more updates from Morning Report, Emergency Medicine. Keep your eyes out for those interesting cases.